Men are good as are you. And today we're going to talk about play. You know, I've been asked by a bunch of people regarding men to do a little bit on play and how to play with children. And a lot of the granddads and a lot of the fathers are who have very short periods of time with their kids are looking for different ways to play with their children to be close to them. And I trained as a child therapist back in the 1970s, I guess it was. And so I know a bit about play and I know a bit about how to play with kids. And I thought I'd share some of that today. And before I do, uh, please know that what I'm going to be talking about can be dangerous. You know, if you're in a litigious situation where someone may be trying to falsely accuse you, be careful. You may not want to do any of this stuff, particularly if it's with girls. Um, that's why I'm recommending that you, if you're going to do this at all, if you're going to play with your kids closely, like I'm going to talk about, make sure you have something recording it. Make sure you have, uh, put your cell phone up and just make a recording of what you're doing. And uh, that way you'll keep yourself safe. Uh, because there's no replacement for this kind of thing. And it's a lot of fun for both you and for the kids. And it gets you closer. It gets you closer with them. So with that said, how do you play with kids? How do you play with them? And the first thing is you have to have fun. You know, you have to enjoy yourself. Remember, the kids are the experts on this. They know how to play. You are the primitive. You know, you don't know that much about what you need to do. So you need to kind of, you know, go with them. Let them lead. Let them lead. Don't go in and say, today we're going to play this. No. Go in and say, what's up for today? And don't use your parental voice. Don't use the voice that says, what are we doing today? You know, <laughs> go in and sing it. What's up for today? How are we going to play? Something like that. I mean, in your own way. In other words, don't be too serious about it. And that lets the kids know, hmm, wait a minute. They're being a little bit on the silly side. I wonder, um, and then you think, okay, you know, we're going to relax, have fun, and laugh a little bit. And so, you know, one of the important things about engaging your children in play is to make sure your eyes are below their eyes. You don't want to stand up and them being down, you know, three feet below you. And you can't play like that. You've got to be on the same level as they are. If they're on the floor, get on the floor. If they're sitting on the floor, lay down on the floor. Make sure your eyes are a little bit lower because this disarms children immediately. If you, If your eyes are a little bit lower, it tells them, Hmm, this is not the usual parental gig. You know, this is something a little bit different. So engage them, let them lead to what comes next, and try and keep your eyes a little bit lower than theirs. And you'll see that they're going to engage you a little bit quicker that way. They're going to wonder exactly what's going on. If you haven't done this before, they're going to wonder what's going on, and, and they're going to be intrigued a little bit. So let them lead, keep your eyes below theirs, and what do you do? You know, one of the things you can do is tell stories. And telling stories with kids is great fun. You know, and if you tell me, you know, yeah, I can't tell stories. Oh, yes, you can. And not only that, but with little kids, two, three, four, five, make up the stories and make them a part of it. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. His name is Jimmy. And his name was, um, 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 um. And he's going to say, Jimmy. Yeah, that was, his name was Jimmy. And he went for a long walk in the woods. He went through and he turned around. All he could see was trees. And he heard a sound over to the side. What did he hear? So you ask him what comes next. And you start telling the story together. He will tell you he heard a tiger. I mean, whatever, whatever he says, then go with that. And take it to the next part. And then ask him again, what was that? Oh, the tiger had a blue tail. I mean, whatever. Just go with him and what he says. And it can be fun. It can be fun. Now, you can also tell fairy stories with kids. You know, even as, as little as three or four years old. The fairy stories are great. Why are they great? Because the stories used to be used as teaching aids for children. And they're perfect for teaching things. So the little kids will get something out of the fairy tales you, you tell to them. And, um, you know, the Grimm's fairy tales are great because they're not PC. 
They're not PC. There's violence in them. There's heartbreak. There's relational aggression. There's actual aggression. There's all kinds of things that happen. And they teach the kids that, you know, this may happen to you and there are ways out of this. So let's see. One of the stories you could tell us that I love to tell kids is a story called The Nose. And I'll leave a link to um, a video I did telling that story. You can hear the story. And if you don't have the Grimm's Fairy Tales, you can hear the story. Listen to it a couple of times and then tell them from, uh, from memory. You know, it's a lot more fun when you do it like that. Plus, if you tell it from memory and you get to a particularly exciting part, say, what would you do? Kids love that. I told stories in my kids' classes and you'd have... 30 kids out there in the classroom and I'd be telling the story and right in the middle of it, right at the exciting part, I'd say, what would you do? Oh, then you see all these, oh, God, Mr. Golden, I, I'm Mr. Golden. <laughs> you, know, you can tell they're engaged when they start saying, I, I want, I'll tell you what, you know, and then they tell you a little bit about the story and about what their perception was. Then you go again, you go back to the story and you finish it, you know, but that engages them and you are one together. You know, you're having fun together. That's what we want. We want you to have fun together with the kids. And telling stories is just one part. Fairy stories is great. Um, as the kids get older, you're going to try and, and tell stories that are a little bit more adult-oriented. And for the adolescents, there's something called trickster stories. Oh, the trickster tales. There's this book called the Winnebago Trickster Tales. It's filled with trickster stories. And these stories are body they're raw, they're about sex, they're about arrogance, they're about all kinds of things. And Trickster, in these stories, uh, carried his penis on his back in a pack. And that's all I'll tell you about that right now. But the Trickster stories are great. I also did a recording for, of a Trickster story uh, when he ate a bulb. And I'll leave a link to that one in the, in the box below also. So you can have a listen to that and give you an idea of what you can tell the adolescents. Adolescents love these Trickster stories. When my daughter was in high school, her friends would say, tell us another trickster story. Tell us another trickster story. They love these things because they're just, they're completely on PC. <laughs> they're crazy stories, absolutely crazy stuff. So tell them and have fun. And we can't forget what's back there, Legos. Man, boys love Legos and dads kind of love them too. So what can you do? Get on the floor. Make sure your eye level is about the same or a little lower and start building. Start building. You build yours and he builds his maybe, or maybe you both build something together and then you destroy it. You let him destroy it. That's part of the fun, right? Is you build it up, then you take it apart. No criticism. Just have fun. Laugh about it as you go. Ask him questions about it as you go. Wow. What's that going to be? Why? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? The conversation flows as you're doing it shoulder to shoulder, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're just quiet and you're doing it together. And you could say, oh, nice job with the tower there, looking good. All kinds of good things can happen with Legos. And kids, boys remember when their dads play with them like that. This is a good thing. It helps you get close. The other thing you can do on the floor is uh, playing with with uh, stuffed animals. Oh gosh, kids, particularly younger kids, love playing with stuffed animals. And one of the things you can do to make it a little bit more interesting is to have these stuffed animals talk. You can make them talk. So you've got Raggedy Ann right here, right? Raggedy Andy, whatever. You've got an action figure. You make him talk. So he says, Jimmy, what's the first thing you need to do when you get out of bed? Or something like who knows what. I mean, he you know he asks him questions, or he tells him you know you got to do this, you got to shoot straight, you know, blah 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 blah, and have Jimmy and the action figure carry on a conversation. Have Jimmy ask him questions. You can do all kinds of fun things. You can have you know the stuffed dogs barking. You can do all sorts of things with stuffed animals and kids, and they love it. They love it when you make the animals talk and make them say funny stuff. You know, make them say funny stuff or ask them questions. You know, ask them if they you have a question for this animal? You have a question for Benji? What would you ask him? What would you say? Benji, do you ever brush your teeth? 
No, never. I hate brushing my teeth. Forget about it. Dogs don't have to do that crazy stuff. I mean, who knows what you can do? You know, there's all kinds of things you can do on the floor and have fun. And there's one more little game we can talk about. And this is a game. It's called the Magic Wand Game. And you can ask the kids, do you want to play this Magic Wand Game? And they'll say, well, what is it? You say, well, it's a game where you imagine you have three wishes. Here, here's a, this is the, this is the magic wand right here. This is the magic wand, you see? And when I hold this magic wand, the game says I can wish for whatever I want. And I have three wishes. And the one rule is you can't ask for more wishes. So you have three. So do you want to do this? Give them the magic wand. And what happens? Then they start saying what they want. And you can talk with them about that. Oh, wow. So you want that. Aha. Uh -huh. What would that be like? You start asking them little questions about what their wishes are. What would it be like? What, what would happen if you did have that? What would you miss? You know, what would be the best thing about it? All kinds of open-ended questions you can ask. And they'll tell you everything. <laughs> they'll just tell you everything. So it can be a lot of fun. You know, that magic wand game. Gosh, the other thing is uh, roughhousing with kids. Dad's roughhouse. And we now know from research that the roughhousing really helps the children. We didn't know that until recently, but the research now shows that when you roughhouse with kids, what happens? They learn the difference between violence and fun. Because dad tells them, no, don't pull ears. No, don't peek, poke people in the eye. You know, he starts teaching what are the limits with this roughhousing stuff. You can be strong, you can squeeze, you can do this, you can do that, but don't poke in the eye, you know? <laughs> and so he's starting to teach them lessons about where you can start and where you can stop. And really, this is so critical because it teaches them the difference between violence and fun. And that's really important for kids to learn. And kids who've had fathers who help them teach them this sort of thing don't get into trouble as much with violence as those who didn't have dads who taught them this kind of thing. So roughhousing, throwing kids up in the air, throwing them up in the air. Dads do this automatically. This is a kind of play. Why do they do that? Because they do it naturally. They don't even think about it. They don't even, no one asks them to do it. They don't think, oh, today I'm going to throw them up in the air. They just do it automatically. It's instinctual. But guess what we know now? We know that the kids who get thrown in the air like that have a better time with risk-taking later in life. Isn't that interesting? So the things that dads do automatically really, really help their kids, including playing. What else? Wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Wrestling's a great way for boys and for girls sometimes. Be careful, though. You know, be sure you're recording. You know, if you're wrestling, because uh, there's all kinds of accusations that come about. But I'd recommend wrestling with the boys. And the boys absolutely love it. You, know, you have to learn how to wrestle with dad and how to wrestle with him. I, my son and I wrestled. It was great sport. I'd say, are you ready for me? And he'd say, yeah, I'm ready for you. Come on. He's like this tall, right? We'd be wrestling, 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 exerting, you know. And uh, he'd get me sometimes. I'd say, okay, okay, I give, I give, I give, I give. And of course... I could kill him if I wanted to, because I'm 6'2", and he was 4'10", whatever, but I let him win. Now, when he gets to win, what does that do for him? Builds him up. Kids need to be built up. Kids need to be told, yes, you're the best at some things. You are wonderful. You're a smart person. You're, a, you're this or you're that. Because all kids need this narcissistic bottom they need this narcissistic piece inside them that tells them they are okay, that they are loved, and they are okay. And as they get older, you start chipping away at that narcissistic bottom. You say, yeah, but in this situation, here's this and that. You have limits here and limits there. And kids learn then that, yes, I'm loved and I'm good at certain things. But you know what? I have things where I need to learn things too. So this whole thing about about helping children be uh, understand their own goodness is important. But it's also important for parents and especially fathers to set limits after that. It's through the limits that kids learn all kinds of things. And the fathers are absolutely phenomenal at setting limits. You know, the moms, my mother, <laughs> you know, she was pretty tough. But I knew that I could get away more with her because she would give in a little bit here and there. My dad wouldn't give in. 
<laughs> he wouldn't get in. Nope. You know, you need to take care of this before you get dessert, you know? And I knew if he said that, I better start eating <laughs> the stuff before I got dessert because he didn't mess around. Fathers generally don't mess around. They don't give in. What does this do? We now know from the research that when fathers do this for children, the children learn to see the world through someone else's eyes. They had to see the world through their father's eyes in having to eat the spinach or whatever it was before they could eat the dessert. And this whole idea of being able to see the world through someone else's eyes is the, is the bottom part of empathy and compassion. You know, we build this compassion and empathy from that very thing. Anyway, the wrestling stuff is great sport. And learn how to let him win sometimes, but also how to make him lose sometimes too. You know, the Panksepp, Jacques, Jacques Panksepp, just a fantastic researcher, did some fascinating research on rats. And he found out that rats play. They, rats love to play. And he found also that the larger rats would allow the smaller rats to win, I think it was 30% of the time. Because if they didn't allow them to win 30% of the time, the smaller rats would stop playing. <laughs> and the older rat, or the bigger rats, wanted to play. And so they let them win sometimes. So even in the animal kingdom, these animals let the other win in order for the play to continue and keep going. So there's a lot we can learn about things. You know, the, there's uh, toy phones. You know, have a toy phone handy. Who should we call? Who do you think we should call? Who would, you, would you like to call Santa Claus? I mean, who knows? Just just make that make that suggestion and see what they say. And then let them, okay, you call them. You call them first. They'll tell you all kinds of things. Playing with action figures. You know, either army men or dolls or whatever. The kids will play and play and, and they'll have stories about these action figures. Let them tell the stories. Listen to the stories they come up with about these action figures. They're telling you all about their own family in so many words. So you're learning about them, plus you're being there with them. And children really value when you can be there with them in their play. You know, when you can be there with them in their play, this, this closeness that happens that they appreciate they're going to want to come back. So if you've got a really limited of time, amount of time and you're in a situation where you may be alienated, this is a really important thing to do because it starts to connect you in a way with your kids, in a way that sitting at a McDonald's eating hamburger is not going to connect you. This is not going to work. And there's one play thing we kind of forgot about. That's gaming. How many boys like video games? Um, almost all of them, <laughs> a lot of them do. I mean, video games are really critical. And in some ways, a lot of parents see video games as being a problem. And, and they see it as being a separation between the parents and them. And they get into all kinds of fights over struggles. Of, you know, how long, how long he can do this and blah, 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 blah. But let's take a little bit of a different approach with this. First thing, what can dads do with that? Play with him. Play with him. Go play the game with him. Hopefully he's young enough so that you can start to play along with him. But play with him, just like you play with things on the floor, or the action figures or whatever. Play with him. If you can't get it, if you can't play well enough to, to, to stick with him, here's what you can do. Ask him to teach you how to play the game. This is critical. It's really critical. Because when you ask your son to teach you how to do something, Guess what it does? It reverses the roles around. Suddenly, he's the expert. He knows what's going on. He's going to teach you, and you become the dummy, you know? And that's a good thing, actually, because it teaches him something about being in this role of being the teacher and what that's like to be the teacher and what it's like to have someone try and learn and not do very well, etc. It's a great thing for him. And it also is a great thing for you because you can then learn the game. You can start playing with him. And if you know the game, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to parent him. Okay? Let's see. Um, Jimmy, it's time for bed. No, oh, I'm in the middle of a game. Jimmy, what part of the game are you in? I'm in level 17. I've got three guys to go before I get to the monster, you know? Okay, Jimmy, that should take five minutes. We'll see you in five minutes. Okay, Dad, thanks. Problem solved. 
You know, if you know the game, you know how long it can take. Or you might say, no, Jimmy, that's way too long. That's going to take you 30 minutes. You've only got five. Figure it out. <laughs> you know, you set the limit, but knowing his game is going to help you be able to set that limit in a way that he understands. You know, the other thing you can do is play with them. Gosh, my grandson loves uh, this uh, online game called Roblox. And he plays online, and I can also play online from my house, and we play together. And it's uh, it's a trip. It's a lot of fun. Or when I visit him where he is, uh, we can turn on that game and both play with separate computers in the same room. I got a little tablet, and he's got a tablet. And we play together. It's, you know, it can be fun. Shoulder to shoulder. That's what you're looking for. Shoulder to shoulder. The other thing men do that we haven't talked about that's shoulder to shoulder is what? It's mentoring. Because fathers will tend to mentor their boys automatically. They do it instinctively. They do it without thinking. And they do it a lot. You know, whether it's teaching a young boy how to use hand tools or teaching him how to use a computer. I mean, who knows what? I'll never forget my father, you know, when he was trying to help me learn how to use a saw, a hand tool. And um, <laughs> and so I, when he taught me, I said, okay, I'll show him. I was trying to go as fast as I possibly could. My father said, let the tool do the work. Let the tool do the work. And just those words, calmly spoken, really said something to me. Of course, I thought at the time, don't tell me what to do. But after a while, I realized, damn, you know, I can just kind of relax more just let the saw do the sawing. Is all I have to do is push it back and forth. So short words like that, spoken calmly from a father, makes a huge difference for a boy. You know. Also, what can fathers do? They can give their blessings. Boys need to be blessed by their fathers, and you can do that. It's cheap. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really pays off down the road for the boy. Just a simple, ah, good job there. And you're getting pretty good at that. Those kinds of things are so critical for young men and young boys to hear from an older man. And if you're an older man around other people's boys, just a little bit of blessing goes a long way because our boys have taken it hard. You know, in schools, they're told they're the oppressor. They've done this. They've done that. There's something wrong with boys. Boys need men's blessings. They need men to tell them, hey, good job with that, right? These are all ways that we can get close to our sons. Mentoring, playing video games, playing, roughhousing, getting down on the floor, lowering your eye level. All of these things are just different ways to get close to our sons. So give it a try. See how it works out. And make sure you tell them, boys are good and men are good as are you. We'll see you then. Men are good. <laughs>